Hello and welcome to Make It Plain. I am your host, Alfonso McGriff III. <clears throat> I want to thank you for tuning in. You could be doing any number of other things, but you chose to hang out with me tonight. <clears throat> I do not take that for granted. Again, my name is Alfonso McGriff III. <clears throat> I identify myself as a public intellectual, an inventor, a writer, and a public speaker. I encourage you to check out my YouTube page at Alfonso Speaks. And I also encourage you to check out my other YouTube page at Make It Plain. I also encourage you to check out my <clears throat> Facebook business page, Alfonso Speaks. And I would also like you to remember that I absolutely love you and I always will. And I will never give up on my people, ever. <clears throat> Tonight, I am making a claim that I've made for quite some time now, and I will continue to make this claim as long as we continue to allow ourselves to be distracted for it, by it. And the claim I make tonight is there is no such thing as racism. And for my man, Willie Stanley, there is also no such thing as white supremacy. Again, I'll say that there is no such thing as racism. And there is no such thing as white supremacy. And for those of you who have some questions about what I'm saying tonight, I welcome, at some point I will welcome you to call in and challenge my thoughts and ask questions. But again, tonight I am saying that there is no such thing as racism. And there is no such thing as white supremacy. <clears throat> and what we identify as racism and white supremacy are nothing more than distractions that keep us from focusing on self, that keep us from looking in the mirror, that keep us from becoming the best people that we can be. Right now, there are many black people up in arms about Donald Trump and his behavior. Donald Trump is not a racist. Donald Trump is not a white supremacist. The people who follow Donald Trump are not racist or white supremacists. People complain about Bill Cosby being in jail and Harvey Weinstein not being in jail. Well, Bill Cosby's black and Harvey Weinstein's white, and this is America. That's how it goes. It has nothing to do with racism or white supremacy. The NCAA just came out with a new set of rules for those who are interested in being agents for potential NBA players. They call it the Rich Paul Rule because a young black male, Rich Paul, who was a good friend of LeBron James, got into the business of becoming an agent. And so they incorporated new rules so that people like Rich Paul, who don't have a college degree and other things can't get involved. And this country has a history of changing the rules it has a long history of changing the rules once white people once black people get involved 
Now, if for some people, uh, the video may have cut off, I can only say to you that's something going on on your end because from what I see, the video is continuing to broadcast and that's on Facebook. <clears throat> so I'm not sure what's going on on your end. <clears throat> so in America, white people have a long consistent history of changing the rules when black folks get involved in the game. That's nothing new, but it's not racism and it's not white supremacy. Black people, a jaywalker is beaten to a pulp while a guy who just murdered six people in the church is taking the Burger King because he said he's hungry. Well, the jaywalker is black and the, and the guy that just murdered six people in the church is white. This is America. What do you expect? A black man is being accused of having a gun and shot to death and there's no gun to be found. But a white guy who just murdered 20 people and injured another 40 or so is standing calmly handcuffed with the police. He's not slammed on the ground. He's not being getting his behind whooped or none of that. But the problem, the, 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 the reality is the black man accused of handing, having a gun is black. And the white man accused of murdering 20 people is white. In America, that's consistent with what goes on in America. Black men who commit crimes are vilified in the media before there's ever a court date and convicted. Whereas white men who do some of the most heinous things in America are identified and diagnosed by the same media of having mental problems and mental instability. So here in America, this behavior of white people in charge giving favor to white people is a regular consistent part of the history of this country. Not only is it a regular consistent part of the history of this country, but it's a regular consistent part of the history of our interaction with them. In no time in the history of us black folks interacting with Europeans or white folks have we ever had a fair and balanced civil relationship? It's always been a relationship where the desire is for white people to control us and treat us like uncivilized animals and unconvicted criminals who are beneath their pets. This is not racism. This is not white supremacy. Now, the reason why I say it's not racism and it's not white supremacy is because I identify it as the nature of their behavior. And the reason why it's important to understand this as the nature of their behavior is because when we understand the nature of the behavior of anything, we never expect it to change. Birds have wings and they fly. For us to identify white people as racist because of the nature of their behavior, that would be similar to identifying a bird 
who continues to fly. As a birdist or participating in birdism because the birds keep using their wings to fly. Now, because we continue to be caught up in this idea of racism, we have yet to be able to deal with the reality of the nature of their behavior. We have yet to deal with the reality and accept the nature of their behavior. To accept the nature of their behavior doesn't mean that we accept being abused or mistreated. It means we deal with them based on our understanding of the nature of their behavior. The other thing that's important about understanding that this is the nature of their behavior is that when you understand the nature of something, you can't get talked into going into a meeting to fix their nature. Let's have a meeting to fix the nature of birds flying. Birds are not going to pay any attention to whatever we discuss and not give one single lemon drop lollipop about what we discuss in the meeting about birds flying. Now, if it's the nature of a snake to bite, What we do is when we're in an area where snakes are, we act like we know that we're in the area where snakes are. Some of us put on high leather boots. Some of us keep a stick with us and move bushes around so we can see. At the end of the day, we conduct ourselves as though we understand who and what it is we're dealing with. You don't call snakes biting snakeism. We don't call birds flying birdism. And the last thing we would ever do is allow someone to have us sitting in a meeting talking about snakeism or birdism. Because we understand no matter how much we meet, the birds and the snakes are going to do what's in the nature of birds and snakes. So, with that understanding in place, it's very important for us to recognize that Hold on one second. One second. I'm trying to. It doesn't look like I have sound on uh, YouTube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave YouTube. And I'm going to. Focus on Facebook and then I'll upload the Facebook video to YouTube. So uh, that's what I'll do. And Willie, if you're still there, I hope that when I open the line to call, that you, you'll call in with your questions. Because, uh, you know, I can't really deal with your questions while I'm trying to focus on what I'm trying to say. So I hope you call in. Uh, the number is 860-281-1615. After, um, you know, I'm almost finished with what I have to say. So once I finish, uh, just call in and then we'll, you know, we'll deal with your questions.
So, and you and I have had this conversation many times and I understand you feel differently and that's okay. That's why I welcome your questions because other people might have the same questions that you have. Um, okay, cool. So we all set with that. So back to what I was saying. In America, this behavior has been going on since we arrived on the scene. This behavior has been going on since before we, since we first had interactions with European or who we call white people. So what I'm saying is, I don't believe in racism or white supremacy simply because to identify the behavior of these particular people as racism is to also acknowledge that we are in denial about their behavior. It's, it's to acknowledge that we expect them to behave differently. It's to acknowledge that we are not ready to accept the fact that they are not going to change. So as long as we stay in denial about our relationship, then we'll continue to set ourselves up to be hurt, maimed, and killed. It is only when we deal with the reality of a situation that we put ourselves in position to handle the situation. Earlier I stated that the behavior of the mass majority of white people in America in particular is their nature. The silent supporters as well as those who are openly clear about where they stand and how they feel about black people and how they treat black people in America. It's not racism. It's the nature of their behavior. And if you don't believe it's the nature of their behavior, I challenge anyone to please call me and inform me, educate me on when in the history of our interaction has our relationship been any different. We are actually complaining about the exact same things 60 years later that we complained about 60 years ago. But because we have technology and we've been convinced by the civil rights movement that our ability to do and have what white people do and have makes us free, we continue to expect them to behave differently. Just because outward things have changed doesn't mean the relationship has changed. When we were enslaved, we were be punished for not behaving or doing what white people wanted us to do. Today, we continue to be punished if we don't behave in a way or do what white people want us to do. And the reason why that can happen is because they had a hundred or so years to set this country up the way they want it to be for their own benefit. The Constitution of the United States of America was the first, was the first significant affirmative action document in the history of this country. The, the Constitution of the United States of America was written and set up that for only white men to benefit. And then after a hundred years or so of total benefit and domination and control over everything, then they said, okay, black folks and Indians, Asians, women, y'all could play now. So 
This country has been the way it is from its beginning, and the people who continue to benefit from the Constitution of the United States of America are not going to change anytime soon. So for any of us who continue to remain in denial about this reality, we will also continue to get hurt, maimed, and killed. It is not until we deal with the reality of the nature of our relationship with most whites and Europeans in this country. It is not until we deal with the reality of that relationship that our the quality of our conditions and our reality will improve. Doesn't matter how much you march, doesn't matter how much you protest, doesn't matter how angry you get, they don't have to change. There's a universal law that says he who is most comfortable is the least likely to change. And the other part of that understanding says he who is doing the most complaining has to do the most changing. So I'm saying to you, don't continue to be duped into the idea that there's some type of racism and white supremacy going on. There is no such thing as racism and white supremacy. There is a such thing as the nature of our relationship. And the question is, for anyone who wants to believe in racism and white supremacy, the question is, when has the relationship been different? When has the relationship been respectful? When has the relationship been one that is of, of, like I said, mutual respect and mutual benefit. Never. And there's no reason to believe it's ever going to be. So if we would like to experience what life is about, eventually at some point then we have to accept the reality of our relationship with the majority of white people and we can move on we don't have any problem with accepting the reality of our relationship with anything else there's something about this thing that we refuse to accept the reality of our relationship with white people it's nothing we have to be angry about for those who conduct themselves in a fair and balanced way with us on a personal level, that's fine. But on a whole, in general, the way this country is set up and the way this country operates, we are not dealing with reality if we continue to get angry about their behavior. We cannot continue to get angry about their behavior and claim that we are dealing with reality. We cannot continue to expect the relationship to be different unless we are in denial. In both cases, if we refuse to deal with reality and we are in denial, that's our problem, not theirs. There hasn't been a time during our relationship with them that they have not been clear. There has not been a time during our relationship with them that they have not been clear. It is absolutely unnecessary for black people in America to still be upset with the behavior of white people in America under the belief that they aren't acting right 
<laughs> and they aren't treating us fair. And they treat white people better than they treat us. Well, what do you expect? When have they not done this? That's the question. <laughs> when have they not treated their own people better than they treated us? How can we continue comparing ourselves? Well, when the brother got caught with some weed, he got life. And then the white dude got caught with some weed and he only got six months probation. Well, what do you expect? When have they not operated that way in this country? So there's no need. It's absolutely unnecessary for us to continue being angry at the behavior of white people. It is our responsibility to act like we know what they are capable of and move with that understanding like we would do anything else. But to keep calling it racism and, 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 and calling the president racist and everybody thinking that that's a courageous move to go public and call somebody racist. It's nothing courageous about that. That's a Negro in denial. Anytime you watch the television and you hear any black person call a white person racist, that is somebody in denial. And people who are functioning in denial get other people hurt. I'm going to just open up this phone. If, if any of y'all want to call, y'all have some comments or for some thoughts. You can call at 860-281-1615. 860-281-1615. If you have any thoughts. Marie asks, what would I call the colonizer and what alternative are there? Why do I have to call them anything? That's the question. Why do, why do I have to give them a title? What's important is that I understand the relationship. They don't have to be identified as anything. All we do is ha we have to identify the type of relationship we have with them. That's all. And act like we know who we're dealing with. 860-281-1615. I have no problem with people who don't necessarily agree with what I say. But I'm always open for people to challenge what I say. If you genuinely believe in racism and you want to call and help me understand why it's important for us to believe in racism and white supremacy, please call in. I'm open to being enlightened. I'm open to being taught. I am open to learning from other people. So I have no problem if somebody calls me and educates me as to why there is such a thing as racism and white supremacy. There is no reason why we should continue to be upset with the behavior of white people in this country unless we are in denial about our historical relationship. To identify their behavior as white supremacy is to identify the behavior as, of birds as bird supremacy. To identify the behavior of white people as racism is to identify the behavior of birds that keep flying as birdism. And so every time we're complaining about the behavior of white people, that's no different than complaining, those birds keep using their wings to fly. Those birds keep using their wings to fly, and that's not fair. Hello? Send a 
Willie. Yes, sir. Peace, my brother. How you doing? I have no complaints. What's up? Yes, sir. Um, I think it's, uh, well, well, let me go ahead and say, great show tonight. I always love your show, your perspective. Dis agree or disagree, it's not the thing. We exchange the thing. And always, whether we agree or disagree, you're always my brother. We're on the same page. Uh, question. Um, what's, I, I, I had the question in my mind. A sister put it up on the Facebook uh, page. What's uh what's our, what's our solution? What's our best move then? Because I mean, it's it's frustrating going to be treated in such a wicked manner by these people. For hello, my bad. That was me. Uh, no, nah, go ahead. Say that again. Okay. My question was, uh... Smooth, what's all that so tired of the... I'm you still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the sister had it, uh, put the same question up on the board. What's our best move, uh, what's our best alternatives? Any, uh, one can only go ahead and take so much mistreatment because, before they blow. Well, when you say take so much mistreatment before you blow, what do you mean? Like, what I'm saying is, is why are you going to blow if you already understand the relationship? They're not going to change. So what are you just going to keep blowing? They're not going to change. So the question is, are you just going to keep blowing or are you going to begin acting like you know who you're dealing with? Oh, well, we know who we're dealing with. We try to get away. They won't leave us alone. We try to do everything humanly possible to go ahead and uh, get it from under these people's uh, jurisdiction, of their influence and those things, and they won't leave us alone. It's either you fight or you flight. Whether you fight, you you in a pickle because you're under, you're under their system. What? You try to respect that system and you still get mistreated. Whether you white, you still go ahead and uh, get mistreated and pulled in their system. So our thing is okay. It is what it is. But we you, one can only take so much before they go ahead and snap because it, because this is not natural. Well, then the question to me is: When you snap, is that going to change their behavior? Oh no, it won't change. Okay, so, oh, so sometimes it will. So because sometimes all all they go ahead and know is uh, mon money, power, and violence. So my point is, you snapping is not going to change their behavior at all. Okay, I'll put. Oh, uh, yeah, you, you're right to a degree, but, but they respect Al Qaeda. Let me no, hold, I, it, hold when, it. When those guys do a jihad uh, type of thing, I'm well, not saying that we should. They don't. I would never say that. They don't thing. respect Al Qaeda when they do a jihad. They make an adjustment to how they're going to deal with Al Qaeda when they do a jihad. My mm -hmm. my point is this: we haven't given ourselves a chance to know our potential power because we're still functioning as individual entities. Anybody can slap a bee with a towel and then whack another bee with a towel. But the question is, will you whack a beehive <laughs> with a towel? And so my point is, if you're dealing with a beehive, you probably would think yeah, a little bit more before you whack a beehive with the towel. You're right about that. You're so, going to think so, a lot more. So what I'm saying is we have yet to become a beehive. We're just individual bees floating around trying to assimilate. You understand what I'm saying? We're, Absolutely. And, and so, so Absolutely. It's, That's one of the right worst now, moves to assimilate, too. So right now it's very easy for them to keep mishandling us on the individual level 
because there is no real level in which we are unified other than under their umbrella. And under their umbrella, we're unified in color, so we get the same treatment. But under our umbrella, we're not unified. Christians don't want to unify with Muslims. Muslims don't want to unify with Christians. And, and what I'm saying is we have so many things separating us from each other, any group in this country. That's why these Chinese men don't have no problem putting their hands on black women all over the country. Because everybody that comes here knows that we aren't unified under anything. The only thing we do is just keep getting mad. But we don't bring ourselves together. We don't become the beehive. We're still functioning as a couple of bees here and a couple of bees there. And anybody can come along and just whack us with a towel. And then we get mad. And we blame them for whacking us with the towel when the problem is actually we got all these bees and we can't find a way to come together and become yeah, a beehive. Uh, 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 every attempt that we come together we're undermined and uh no brother no that. no see what i'm saying is all i gotta do is go by me uh -huh. can't can nobody undermine me from coming together with our people why would i believe that why would i believe that every time we try to get come together they undermine us no every time we try to come together they do what they always do and then we leave whatever we were building to go run and be mad at them. We go marching in the street. We go praying in the street. We go crying in the street. We go lighting candles in the street. We go boycotting in the street. We go, we do, we, we go do all of these things and get totally and completely distracted. Because we, any time they want to, all the president of this country has to do is just say something. And all of a sudden, we're taken <laughs> totally off, off our square. We are, the, we are easily taken off our square. Yeah, you are so right about that. So what well, I'm saying is our problem right now is us. Our biggest problem is us, not white people. Our biggest problem is us because we refuse to accept the reality of our historical relationship with white people. Our biggest problem is us because we think emotional reaction is unity. Our biggest problem is us because we aren't unified and we have so many things that are separating us. You can, we can't even get the, the, the Baptist church together because they're all separate entities. And if you talk to one black church in this city about unifying with another black church in this city or anything like that, they would just think you was retarded and foolish. Yeah, you're right. It ain't so, gonna so we can't even unify under the same Jesus. You, we, we can't unify under the same Jesus. <laughs> we can't unify under the same God. We can't unify even under the same religious beliefs. So how in the world are we going to expect anybody else to have any respect for us? When you mention uh, 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 any other nationality that we can keep comparing ourselves with when we compare ourselves with the Jews. Well, first of all, the Jews were never, uh, there was never an attempt to remove the Jews from knowledge of self. So the ones right. that died, died with knowledge of self, the ones that live, continue to live with knowledge of self, they didn't have to start over. We can't compare ourselves with the Latinos. Because the Latinos, when they come and have a meeting, they come in with the same language, they come in with the same music, they come in with the same religious beliefs, they come in with the same food, they come in with a whole cultural foundation that they have in common that they can move from. When black people come together, some of us coming in there as Jehovah's Witnesses, some of us coming in there as uh, Christians, some coming as Muslims, Muslims some coming, yeah, right. some of us coming yeah, under our, our British influence. So we got to have tea for an hour before the meeting start. My our Muslim influence, we got to slam my head on the mat five times and, and whatever. So we all <laughs> black people. We might look similar, but when we come in the meeting, we're coming with all our colonial baggage. So we can't compare right. ourselves to other people. Now the real issue here is that 
One of the things that I'm always saying, the real issue here, is that the civil rights movement taught us that as long as we can eat at the lunch counter with white people, and we can send our kids to school with white people, and we can live in the same neighborhood as white people and sit on the same bus with white people, that we were free. Uh, big but, mistakes. But we've never defined freedom for ourselves. And even right. when we demanded freedom, we demanded to be equal to white people. We didn't demand that we get reconnected with our history and our culture. We didn't demand all of the records so we'd know where where our ancestors came from and connect all of that up to our history and our our culture and 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 and, and practices and mores and all of that kind of stuff and our demand for freedom we demanded to be like white people yeah, which to go in and which right. which confirmed that we were still out of our natural minds now the question is have we ever dealt with the fact that we're out of our natural minds no because guess what? Because now we can send our kids to school with white people and we can move in the neighborhoods with the great educational system. We can go eat where white people eat. We can live where white people live. And so we think we're free. But, you know, even those who, who can do all of that and they have all of the money in the world, all you have to do is look at our people in entertainment and all of the rich black folks in entertainment, everything else, and they still haven't found peace. It's not yeah, even, right it's, it's obvious, even more, really. it's obvious, there's no peace, there's no, un, no, no being able to really experience what life is about. So what happens is we define ourselves as how def the society defines us. So we define Usher as a singer and we define Oprah as a talk show host. And then guess what? We try to fulfill those definitions. Oprah, yes, I am a talk show host. Yes, I am a, a producer. I am. Not, none of us, uh, uh, black people in America, have yet to realize that we are human beings who happen to be able to do all of these other things. We identify, more. even Muhammad Ali, I'm the greatest fighter. His whole definition was around boxing. Now, I mean, the dude was intelligent and all that stuff, but he never really embraced life. He only embraced boxing. And so right now we have yet to realize we are still out of our natural minds and functioning with a consciousness created by white people over that 400 year period of unedited, uninterrupted enslavement. And so we have black folks who say, uh, black people treat me worse than white people. Well, you say that only because you have expectations of blacks that you don't have of whites. What's really happening? <laughs> what's really happening? What's really happening is black people treating you just like white people. Know why? Because black people That's function. Who programmed black it. people functioning with a consciousness white people created, and we still have yet to deal with that. Nobody, everybody can talk about PTSD after somebody go and fight in a war for a few months or a couple of years. If somebody can respect PTSD after a few years at war, how can you not deal with the reality of what happened to us after 400? Ooh, yeah, you're right. We beyond something called PTSD. We, are, we operating with a colonial consciousness. Our consciousness has been contaminated. And we functioning with a universal spirit. Our essence and our spirit is universal. The root, the foundation is universal. But we're functioning with a colonial consciousness. That is the recipe for conflict. So we're in conflict inside already before we even start trying to deal with the external. So, I don't think we'll ever go ahead and mature to the people that we're supposed to be. Uh, my brother, my and, brother, my brother, my brother. We have the potential to mature to And the even people. in this cage, us being in America to me is like a bird being in a cage. It can never fly high and be as first to what it truly should be. And the one thing that I know for a fact is if that's what you believe, that will be your truth. Well, belief is a revelation. I mean, belief is just my belief. Brother, belief is our lack if, of knowledge. If that's what you believe, that will be your truth. The, the believing and achieving thing, huh? No, listen. 
there are people who are athletes. And see, this is the thing. We, we've been taught to only see things in boxes. There are people who are athletes, gymnasts, basketball players, um, Yeah, yeah. Okay. Gymnasts, basketball players, all kinds of entertainers who spend weeks and months seeing themselves going through their routine. Do you know why they do that? They do that so by the time it's time to do what you do, then it's automatic. They've already seen themselves succeeding. I heard... The brother from Duke say, I've been wanting to play in the NBA since I was four years old. Do you know how many you, you, you know how many times in his mind he first had to see himself in the NBA? And he had to feel himself in the NBA? And he had to put himself in the position as though he's already in the NBA and to in, in order to make manifest that into reality? So what I'm saying to you is if you already say, oh, it can never happen. We ain't going to never be able to. Die. Well, OK, that's that is going to be your reality. You're going to make manifest that reality into fruition. And so what I'm saying is we are so incredible. Yes, we, we are, are yes, so are right. freaking incredible, man. It's beyond anything anybody can explain. No matter what we do that the world copies and makes money off of it, we always come with next levels. That the Next levels. Next levels. And then we come with next levels. We are, first of all, the human machine is the most incredible machine in the history of existence. And then we, the original people <laughs> of this particular planet, are exceptionally incredible. Our potential is beyond our comprehension. If we live to be a thousand years old for a lifetime and lived a million lifetimes, we would never reach our potential. So what I'm saying is we have to channel our energy and our focus on us. Because as long as our energy and focus is not on us, then we are susceptible to being abused by anybody. As long as we haven't developed a way to unify and become that beehive, then as individual bees, people just keep pulling their towels out, slapping us around. These Asian men will continue beating up black women. These white police officers... <laughs> These Not white, no these, the, 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 now uh -uh. see, this is the thing, my brother. You, what, what? I need. This is a very important. This is very key here. You say not on your watch. If there was a concern about you, it wouldn't happen. Even if you weren't there. The reason why Asian men could beat up on black women is because they aren't concerned about anything happening. And there's a reason why they aren't concerned about anything happening. Because we are not the beehive. We are individuals flying around and getting slapped around and complaining about the people slapping us around. It is important for us to stop complaining about white people and start mobilizing ourselves and figuring out how we can get, on, get ourselves in order to the extent that we can become the beehive, to the extent that we can work together on our own behalf. It's quite the challenge, and of course it ain't easy, but it's a lot less difficult than to continue to expect white people to change. Oh, I don't expect that. I know this change has to be come from, from within us. Oh, no. We have to change. And we you, have to. And you can't 
keep running around here letting people dupe you into this whole racism stuff. You know, I mean, literally, there are people, black people in the media believing that it's courageous to call the president a racist. Well, there's nothing courageous about that. All you're doing is is outing yourself as the next target. Well, to, to call himself a call, well, what, can I do it too? To call him a race, I mean, I don't do it publicly or anything like that. Just, just put some things in. But to identify him or anyone that else that's acting, uh, and acting that behavior like him, is to definite and raise it, racism, what you say, their behavior towards us. Again, black people who call white people racist are also black people who choose to remain in denial about the history of our relationship. Oh, okay. I, I can agree with that. I, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, some of the people saying, I'm not, I'm not going to go ahead and sit back and keep taking this. You Listen, announcing that they're racist is, is, doesn't mean you're not taking it. So what? You call them a racist. So what? What, what is that? That means you're not taking it anymore because you announced they're racist? That don't mean a damn thing. It, the, 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 what it means is well, you are, what, what, what it some, means we're doing something behind it. Well, I guess the best, what it the best means thing is to do it is to organize ourselves. What it means is you are still angry about the nature of their behavior. You when you call white people racist, you're trying to announce and call them a derogatory and negative name. The reason right. why you're calling them a derogatory and negative name is because you don't like the way they're behaving. When you are in denial about the nature of the behavior of something, you claim to not like it, you keep calling it racist. You don't know of any history where they've ever behaved differently towards us, but you still want to call them racist. They're not racist. It's the nature of their behavior. Now, what are you going to do? Keep name calling or start looking in the mirror and working on yourself? Because they ain't changing. He who was doing the most, he who was doing the, listen, if you, again, 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 again. More should change on me, but you got to call it, go call a spade a spade so everybody else will know it's a spade. And then, and, and I'll tell you, that calling a spade a spade is making the announcement. See, see, look what I mean. See that bird? He keep using his wings to fly. That's just how you sound. <laughs> what, what, you, what, why, why do you keep needing to announce the bird keep using his wings to fly? Unless you are crazy. Uh, no, no, we just, uh, we just, no, man, man, understand, we, like, like listen, it's, it's, it's a 400 year indoctrination that we've been, uh, I, we've walked it out in a hundred years. Right, right, but you, right now, I'm talking to you, and I'm right. giving you an example, and I'm showing you, and you still saying, well, we need to call them what they are, uh, the indoctrination okay. is heavy. Okay, you, you're right on that one, that's just like he, Dr. Sabi died, though. Just because you go ahead and we're raised on that those soul food and stuff like that, you can't stop overnight. It's a weaning process. Right. But we talking on the phone right now. I'm not right, right. you gonna tell me about uh mucus and all of these foods that create mucus and mucus is the bed for all kind of diseases. I'm not gonna be on the phone with you talking about, yeah, but I still like that ice cream, yo. Listen, I understand what you're saying. And what you're saying makes sense. So I'm not going to keep insisting that bread and ice cream taste good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even right. even though I know it's difficult for me to uh, to stop eating the, the ice cream or the what the bread or whatever. Or potato chips for you. Potato, potato chips for me. You know, and and Laura asked the million dollar question, which is what people always ask. Well, what do you suggest? What do you what do you what do you suggest? I, I've been suggesting it the whole, the whole time. And what I've suggested is that we focus on ourselves. And, and okay, I think, I think uh, more, more importantly, I should have a show on. I think you did have a no, show on no. before when you broke down what is focus on ourselves. Yeah, and, and focus on, on improving the quality of who we are. First of all, we have to acknowledge, just like the alcoholic 
Laura. Just like the alcoholic acknowledged I'm an alcoholic, and the uh, drug addict acknowledged I'm a drug addict, and and the person who right. overeats acknowledged that. The first thing you do is acknowledge the problem. Stop the denial. Now, the first thing we need to do, Laura, is acknowledge we are out of our natural minds. We are out of our natural minds. We are functioning with a consciousness created by white people. That's the first thing we have to do. The second thing we have to do is get ourselves outside of white people's race-based paradigm. The third thing we have to do is re-embrace our universal life foundation. We, we come from a place where universal laws, principles, and understandings are the basis for our understanding of life and living. You know, um, uh, uh, my man, uh, Marcus Johnson, Marcus Q. Johnson, he said, respectfully, the term racism isn't derogatory. It is, this, it is the name of a power structure. We don't have to make the term emotional. We don't have to dwell on it or, uh, or let it stop our progress. It's just what it is. It isn't name calling. Marcus, I respectfully understand you but I respectfully see it differently. Anytime black people announce that a white person is racist or the behavior of white people is racism, then they are in denial about the reality of our relationship. White people historically have behaved this way all the time. That is true. And so whether you announce it because of the power set up well, when has the power set up not been the way it is since we've been here? So, again, it's the same thing as announcing birds keep using their wings to fly. Okay, so, so, so now what are we going to do? That's the question. You can, you, 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 you don't have to, you, you. You can identify, I call that the intellectual definition, using power to keep a group of people from making advancement and using the position and power that you have. And we don't have the power to do that to them, but they have the power to do that to us. And that's why we call that racism. Yeah, I've heard all of that. But racism is directly, when black people call white people racist, that's directly connected to how they treat us. If it's not, somebody let me know. When black people call white people yeah, racist, right. is it not directed directly connected to how they treat us? Absolutely. Okay. So now, if it is connected to how they treat us, then how often, how 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 many times do we have to announce that they keep treating us bad? When have they tr not treated us bad? What just enlighten me on any historical period where our relationship with white people and Europeans has been such that they have treated us with respect and not treated us bad. I'll I wait. can't say, I can't name it. I'll wait. So again, no matter how intellectual the definition of racism, at the end of the day, you are, we are announcing that white people are not treating us right. And I, I'll say again, I don't know of any behavior when they have it when they have treated us in a, in a fair and balanced and respectful way. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So I, I say again, anytime white people, anytime black people feel the need to call white people racist, it means that we are in denial because we are expecting something different than what we're getting. And for us to expect something different than what we're getting is, is, Denial gets you hurt, maimed, and killed. Okay, let me go and ask you one, uh, one, one last thing before I go and get off this song, because it, this complicates it even more. What about the interracial relationship with, between a, a white and a black? With this dynamic going on as it is, it's already complicated. That makes us, us put our guards down to where it's more complicated. I, I don't see what was complicated about it. What's complicated? Because it seems like you're sleeping with the enemy, like with not not that you are. It seems like the perception is there. It may not be the reality. 
Okay, see, that's that's another problem of ours you've heard me talk about. Is us, as a matter of fact, I just mentioned it tonight. I said the second thing we have to do after acknowledging we're out of our natural minds is get ourselves out of white people's race based paradigm. We, we, we were dragged in that race based paradigm when we were dragged in this system. Just because we were dragged in it, don't mean we have to stay in it. Uh, yeah, that's the key. We have to. We don't have to stay in it. Okay, so now I mean, hold it. Wait, wait, wait. As long as we're in it, we're gonna go ahead and be influenced by it so powerfully no, no. to control everything, pretty much. To but, go ahead and uh, program our mind, it's almost diff impossible to get out of it unless you separate from it. It's not impossible to get out of it. And you yeah, it's almost impossible. You don't have to separate from it. You just don't have to participate. Again, what I'm saying is this. Uh, one second. What, what, I, <laughs> what I'm saying is, as much as we claim to want to reconnect with our history and our culture, we still want to hold on to this ignorant paradigm created by ignorant white men. We let me let me let me let me go and get away from it. I would like you to allow me to finish. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead, brother. Okay. So historically, we didn't live or make moves based on race. And if we are to have this desire to be reconnected with our history and culture, we can't hold on to white folks' race-based paradigm and become the best people we can be. Um, we can't, th those two things can't operate in the same space. Marcus Q. Johnson said, there is a difference between saying, let's not give racism our energy and saying that racism doesn't exist. I agree that we shouldn't spend most of our energy uh, convincing white people of these dynamics as much as we should be spending it uh, bettering our communities. Now, Marcus, my brother, my talented brother. When I say racism does not exist, I am saying that there's an when 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 we call their behavior racism, we put ourselves in a position to have discussions about resolving racism. You, you heard a lot on the news about ending racism, fixing racism. The reason why I say racism doesn't exist is because it can't be resolved or ended or fixed because it's the nature of the behavior of the people. You can't be in a meeting talking about resolving the nature of the behavior of anything. That doesn't make sense. Like I said earlier, to sit in a meeting and be talking about fixing birdism, because birds keep using their wings to fly, is insanity. And it is just as out of order to sit in a meeting talking about racism and fixing racism. I, even the idea of identifying it as racism gives people in this country, in the context it has been used historically, the belief that it is something that can be worked on and fixed. The only thing that can end this behavior in this country is white people. The reason why this relationship continues to exist is because of white people. The only way it's going to change is when white people change. So the reason why I say racism doesn't exist is because it is important that we don't even allow ourselves to be 
duped into believing that we can have a conversation about changing it or fixing it or anything like that. The only people who can fix this relationship is white people. And the only thing we can do is handle white people the way we handle everything else. In reality, we don't call snakes that can bite and kill us snakeism. We act like we know what we're dealing with when we're around snakes. Some of us even identify all snakes as poisonous because we don't know the difference. Okay. And so we just act like we know what we're dealing with when we're around snakes. We Lions can kill us and bears can kill us, but we don't call it lionism or bearism. We understand the nature of the behavior of lions and bears. And we act like we know when we're in the presence of lions and bears. All I'm saying is we have been conditioned so deeply that we give white people some kind of special benefit of a doubt. And we don't conduct ourselves the same way with them, even though there's a long, consistent history where their behavior toward us has been the same. And we can't find any history where it's been different. And there's something in us that keeps expecting them to do something different. So we have these wonderful reasons why we want to stay caught up in the race-based paradigm and why we want to call the president a racist and we create memes and we write all of this stuff on Facebook and, and we keep making the comparison. See what they did to the white person versus what they did to the black person and they mistreated us but they gave the white person a break. Well, what, when have they not done that in this country? Why are we still complaining about the behavior of white people unless we're in denial about our relationship? We've been drinking the Kool-Aid. And Marie says, we've been taught all our lives that the hate of a, dom I, of a dominant race, I don't know why people call white folks a dominant race, but the hate of a dominant race against us, uh, against a less dominant race is called racism. We will need to have it erased from the white institution for us not to use that term. Whites are not in denial of being called racist. Um, they understand their power and why they are who they are based on their so-called superior nature. We have to be okay to call things as they are. Denial is to know the truth and not want to accept the truth as the truth. That's what Anne Marie said. Now, <clears throat> I can understand what Anne Marie is saying. And I'm not here to tell you not to call white people racist. I'm not here to tell you not to believe in racism and white supremacy and believe there's some type of dominant culture. I'm not here to tell you not to believe any of that. I'm just here sharing another perspective, saying why, the, according to me, there's no such thing as racism. There's no such thing as racist. There's no such thing as white supremacy. I will never, ever in my existence, physical or energy-wise, identify white people as the dominant culture. I will <laughs> never, ever, ever in the existence of my physical presence or energy presence, identify white people as uh, supreme or white supremacy, never, ever accept that because that is not reality. There, there, is, there is no white person who is supreme over me or my consciousness. And so let me just, just give you an example. Um, I am one who moves from the understanding that freedom has absolutely nothing to do with white people or our ability to go to school with white people or our ability to have what white people have and do what white people do. 
freedom as I understand it is having the ability to assess reality. Determine to the best of my ability how this reality works. Decide what I want from this reality. And then figure out how to make this reality serve my best interests. Independent of anything going on with white people or not, I can do that. And that is where freedom is for me. Now, a guy can be in prison, locked up for the rest of his life, in a jail cell for 23 hours out the day, and be free. And the way he does that, because there's a universal understanding of freedom that goes way beyond our ability to do what white people let us do or don't let us do. Life is so much bigger than white people. Right now, white people got us so locked in, we believe everything connected to life is connected in some way to what white people are or aren't doing. Th this is insanity on our behalf. There can be a brother locked up in prison 23 hours out of a 24-hour day. I mean, in a cell 23 hours out of a 24-hour day, doing life in prison and be free. And the way he does that is he understands the reality he's in. Okay, I'm in prison for the rest of my life. See, the key about underst the key to freedom is you 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 have to accept reality and deal with reality you cannot be in denial about any part of reality and expect to understand what freedom is so this guy he's in prison for life in a cell for 23 hours out a day and he says okay this is what i'm gonna do Based on the reality that I'm in, I understand that I can read books, I can paint, I can draw, I can write letters, I can make phone calls, I can get an education. He assesses all the things that he's able to do based on the reality of his situation. And then he says, okay, what do I want? out of this based on the reality of the situation I'm in. Well, I know what I want to do. I want to leave some kind of legacy, so I'm going to write a book. I want to be able to write. I want to write some poetry. I want to write a book about certain things that I think about in here, and I want to be able to read. So he decides he wants to write. He wants to write some books. He wants to write poetry, and he wants to read. And then, based on his reality and what he wants, he begins to make that reality serve him. That man is a lot more free than a whole lot of people walking around out here in the streets because he was able to assess the situation, understand how it works, decide what he wanted from it, and then figure out how to make it serve him. That's what freedom is about. That's not what we're taught, though. Our whole paradigm is limited to a diameter defined by the civil rights movement which is being equal to white people, and a circumference based on that diameter would make our whole, which makes our whole life be based on what white people are or aren't doing. And that is just, that's living on a speck of dust from a grain of sand and totally withdrawn from the universe and our own universal assignment. Life is so much bigger than white people, y'all. Life is so much bigger than so-called racism and white supremacy. You know, I, I, I can't even begin to help you understand. Okay, but over here and here where we are right now, we haven't personally experienced that. We are so indoctrinated and we're taught everything else. It's hard for us to go ahead and uh, accept that. Not, not, 
it's hard for to accept it, not impossible, or to go ahead and uh, envision that. One thing I've learned is that the more we talk about how difficult it is to change on our own behalf, the less change we'll make. At some point, we're going to have to talk about what can I do to make this change possible. It's, right. it's easy to talk about reasons why we can't do it. It's easy to talk about reasons why we can't do it. And we really... Uh, I think they can. It's, it's and, just and difficult to. It's easy to talk about how difficult it is. Yeah, we can do that all day long. Well, if we, can, you, if we can put well, energy into talking about how difficult it is, why can't we use that same energy to talk about what we need to do to overcome the difficulty? Oh, I mean, we can. Okay, so brother. But the reality so are, no, brother. My most brother. Of us my go, my go brother. By what we go ahead and see and experience and and my and, brother. And, uh, to get back what you say again, please. And my brother, you can continue to tell me how difficult it is, and you can continue to tell me how. Uh, what most of us are thinking and how most of us this and that and the other. One of our biggest challenges is that we are always, we can't save the world and we can't right. save anybody. Our focus needs to be our damn self. Absolutely. So it ain't about what other people can and can't do or what the rest of the people or all of that. It, it's about what 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 can we do to improve the quality of who we are? And how can I go about doing that? I struggle with that every day when it comes to the whole diet thing, man. I'm constantly, but I'm not out here talking about, oh man, it's so hard. I just much rather eat a, a cupcake and some potato chips. And no, I'm talking about, you know what? I'm making a plan to make some juice and this and that and my mind is constantly focused on what I can do to make the change that I would like to do not on how difficult it is to make the change I get your message and, and I like that I appreciate that too and Marie said change is possible but we have to start making change at a system systematic level reaction is deeply um, entrenched in our societies the uh, right. the social and political and economic structures are built upon that systematic truth. Okay, so you said we got to start making a change in a systematic level. No, uh, I believe <laughs> that we have to start making change on a personal level. You know, if each that? if each one of us began making a improving the quality of who we are, then it's only natural that the space we're in would also improve. If we focused on improving the quality of who we are, the space we're in would naturally improve. I could never, ever have hope in this idea of changing the system or trying to go after the system. You know, we need to go after these schools and make them teach black history. And, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I would never put my energy in, in, in battling. Again, that's just, you know, putting energy in battling white people. You know, my thing is I love that, man. I teach love the that. kids to go to school and get an A and come home and get an education. Because we can use the system to serve us. Let, don't let them go to school arguing about Christopher Columbus. And tell them that to go to school and put whatever answer they need to get the A and come home and get an education. But we don't want to be responsible for educating our kids. We want to make the schools responsible so we, it's important for us to go change the schools. Well, that's, that's not practical. The greatest change that's going to work on a, on, on our greatest behalf is for us to look in the mirror and start working on that. Yes, sir. Absolutely. 
like Whitney Houston saying, the greatest love of all is you. Laura said, it seems like, Laura said, it seems like we're stuck on terminology. Let's not assume. That, that's it. Let's not assume that all of us are out of our natural minds. I agree. Some of us are where. Some of us are uh, out of our natural minds. Let's talk about what we can do collectively. We can't do nothing collectively. We learn this whole collective thing and leadership thing from white people. There's nothing that happens collectively. Everything that starts it starts with individuals who happen to be in the same place who happen to wind up in the same place because they're doing the same things. There is no collective consciousness. There is, There are individuals who move with a particular kind of consciousness who find themselves together in a collective doing what that collective decides to do. But this idea that there's like this leader in a suit and then a collective consciousness and doing something collectively, no, because people don't learn on the same, don't learn everything collectively. People don't learn things together. People don't learn like the school tries to tell us to learn. You learn this in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade, and everybody graduates and move forward together. And then, That's just not how human beings operate. And that's why people get left and some, you know, and they got spots for everybody. So, um, is there a social consciousness? What is a social consciousness? What is that? I, I don't, I'm not sure I know what that is. What's a social consciousness? Um, man, let me get ready to go, brother. You dropped in some deep stuff. I, I appreciate talking to you, man. You gave me a lot to think about, even on the simplest level. Okay. All right. Take you later. Peace. I appreciate you. Peace, man. Um, yeah. Uh, Anybody can call 860-281-1615. Again, the number is 860-281-1615. But what is social? What is social consciousness? I'm here kind of alone tonight because this racism thing, we, we and this race-based thinking, we, we, we really have to loosen ourselves from it because we're, we're wasting a lot of time and energy um, I wasn't born to struggle. I wasn't born to be fighting all the time, angry all the time, trying to overcome. I wasn't born to break color barriers. I was born to live. We were born to live. And so as long as we continue to only operate in the context of white people, we, we can't experience what living is about. Social consciousness is a shared idea by a group of people. Okay. So, yeah, there are shared ideas by groups of people. You got shared ideas by the Jehovah's Witnesses. You got shared ideas by the Baptists. You got shared ideas by the Christians. You got shared ideas by the Muslims. You got shared ideas by the Israelites. You got shared ideas by the Moors. You got shared ideas. We got all kind of ways. You got shared ideas by Albany Avenue. You got shared ideas by Blue Hills Avenue. We got shared ideas by Granby Street. We got all kind of ways of dividing ourselves. We got shared ideas by the Bloods and shared ideas by the Crips. So we got plenty of shared ideas. Uh, yeah, we got that. But all of our shared ideas are divisive. They contribute to splitting us up. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess there is a social consciousness, but there is a, 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 a split up social consciousness. And the other thing is that we, we, um, We, uh, I'm trying to, what is, Amory, consciousness shared by individuals in a society to be conscious and aware of the problems within our communities and our societies.
Um, I think there's a lot of awareness of what's going on in our communities and our societies. But I believe the original problem is, is it hasn't been addressed. And I said that earlier is that we are out of our natural minds and we are functioning with a consciousness created by white people. Um, and that has to be addressed. So we can have all a multitude of problems underneath that one big one. And we can keep dealing with all of the multitudes of problems or we can address the pink elephant in the room. We're functioning with a mindset created by white people. And we're going to have to deal with that. Now or later. Laura says, I'm not sure what you, I'm not sure I agree with you um, in that we're trained to go to school to get a good education and work. That was designed by white people. That's the way they keep us from freedom. We keep ourselves from freedom. White people don't keep us from freedom. They don't have that much power. But we don't know what freedom is and we haven't defined it. And, and we don't have a, a, a general understanding of freedom of our own. Freedom is not defined within the context of white people. Freedom is defined within the context of life. Life is so much bigger than white people. My brothers and sisters, life is so much bigger than white people. Um, and what is a good job, Laura? What, what's a good job? What is a good job if everything we want has been defined by somebody else's I wants and needs? So we go get a job so that we can get the things that we think we decided we want when the society itself has decided, when the people who we give all of the money back to are the ones who decided what we want. What is a good job? And I'm going to have another tough discussion either tomorrow or Friday. I want to talk about the fact that I want to talk about the fact that there are women there are a lot of women who are with men that they are afraid of. And there are a lot of women who are staying with men who they are afraid will kill them. And this is something that I was brought to my attention. And to be quite honest, I think initial, my initial reaction was very disrespectful because I thought that was a very extreme way of putting things until I started checking things out for myself and talking to women. So sometime uh, between maybe tomorrow night or Friday but I'll put it in my page I want to talk about this thing where there are women who are literally afraid to not be with men that are no good for them because of their fear that the man will kill them. And that's a tough one to discuss, but we're going to put it on the table. Now, I would like to say that um, when I come on and share information, it's never with the intent or goal to 
force my thoughts on anybody or make anybody change. It's only to share my perspective. And the goal is to put another perspective out there. I'm never looking for anybody to agree with me. I'm never looking for anybody to disagree with me. I'm never looking for anybody to agree to disagree. I am just out here sharing information and people can take it or leave it alone. And I'm also here to listen for anybody who's interested in sharing because I know that I can always learn from anybody. So Laura and Anne Marie and, and, and Willie Stanley and everybody else who who hung out with me tonight, I definitely appreciate you. Again, my name is Alfonso McGriff III. I identify myself as a public intellectual, a writer, author, inventor, public speaker. If you haven't already liked my Alfonso Speaks business page, I would appreciate it if you would do so. And you can also see some of my videos on YouTube at Make It Plain. If you type in Make It Plain and then type in Alfonso, Alfonso, my YouTube channel will come up. Or you can type in Alfonso Speaks and my other YouTube channel will come up. So again, I appreciate you for hanging out with a brother tonight. I love you, and I always will, and I will never give up on my people, ever. <laughs>